Hello, everyone. I'm Dr. Theodore Ransaw. We are going to have one of the most amazing folks that you've ever heard in your entire life. One of my really good friends and colleagues, Brother Moomin. He is a superintendent. I'll have him tell a little bit more about himself. I think he can probably tell you about himself more than I can. But what I can tell you about him personally, I have been in the audience while he has spoken to educators about what's good for the country, what's good for black males, what's good for students across the board. And most of the time, by the time he finishes talking, I am speechless. I don't even have any questions. I'm just amazed about his content. He has lots of information. We're gonna share some thoughts about his book. Hopefully everyone see it there. All right, I'll make sure I post that as well. So it's Problem Child. He's gonna talk about his book today. And so without further ado, I will introduce Dr. Khalid Moomin, and I'll have him share just a little bit about his book. So first off, if you could tell us what the title of your book is, the publisher, and where they can get your book. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. And um, Dr. Ransaw, I am just humble and proud to be here this morning to have this conversation with you. Um, I, I am just in all of the work that you're doing at Michigan State, and I'm just so fortunate to have great friends like, like you to be able to, to do this work together because it, it, it's a journey. Um, the book that I, that I wrote, it's called Problem Child, uh, Leading Students Living in Poverty Towards Infinite Possibilities of Success. Uh, the publisher is WGW Publishing Company. Uh, and that's Wanda Gibbs Publishing uh, out of Brooklyn, New York. Um, very, uh, a very good small publishing operation who focuses a lot of her, uh, her a lot of her published materials or her authors, her subject matter, they, they deals with social justice uh, and dealing with how to uplift underserved communities, uh, talking about uh, single parent uh, households and how to uplift children of single parent family. So just a wonderful small publishing operation. Um, the book is available on amazon.com. Uh, and I must say, I'm so humble and proud that the book has been holding a four, uh, four and a half star review uh, since it's been out. And also the book can be found uh, at my personal website where I autograph copies. And that is leadership on demand in demand.com uh so it, it it's just been a labor of love uh really putting out this work and i had the opportunity to really tell tell my story um which which is fascinating to me and it's been very very much supported uh for for colleagues especially in education to continue to have that hope hope for our children who come from underserved communities to be able to lead them again to change their current conditions and to create successful sustainable future so again thank you so much i think that is i think that's a powerful way to start off well before we talk about the book um just very briefly can you tell us something about yourself something that you think we should know maybe yeah. something you think we shouldn't know but tell yeah. us a little <laughs> I, I'll tell, tell us you a little bit of something I, 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 about I'll tell you, Dr. Ransaw. Uh, I, I get I, I'm fascinated by this part where currently I am uh, the superintendent of the Lower Marion School District in, in, in Pennsylvania. And if that rings a bell, that's the district where Kobe Bryant, uh, Kobe Bryant left his mark uh, in Lower Marion. And my journey to Lower Marion, you know, coming out of poverty, growing up, born and raised in Philadelphia. People sometimes get lost in, oh, he's the superintendent. And, and in 2021, I was the superintendent of the year in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania uh, and the first and only superintendent to place nationally. I was top four nationally. And people get caught up into that. Who is this Dr. Mumin guy? Who is Dr. Mumin that graduated from the University of Pennsylvania and the master's degree from Penn State and the undergrad ship is university? Well, it all goes back to growing up in Logan underserved, living in poverty, powerful mom, uh, powerful mom, good family structure. Um, and I'm talking about the neighborhood was my family to be able to help uplift me and move me forward and propel me uh, it, through a career in education. Uh, I'll say 
what I really enjoy about speaking about, I'm an athlete and I love the, a former athlete, let me, let me rephrase that, a former athlete <laughs> who began the journey of fighting against the perceptual issues that all athletes can do is compete. I wanted to take that same ferocity with the help of great educators motivating me to put it into work, put it into practice in the classroom and academics. And I was able to excel that way. Um, so I went from a, a student who was retained in ninth grade. Uh, and I always say I love ninth grade so much, I did it twice uh, to a young person who definitely defied the odds in regards to, you know, what the data was saying about me for a kid who's retained. What um, what the data was saying about kids who grew up in underserved communities with single in single parent households, you know, really disputing what was talked about and researched in the bell curve theory that motivated me to want to do great things. And as I've been embarking on this journey and each day is a, a new day to have a chance to make an impact. I'm learning like, man, this is something, you know, at, with, with the type of responses I've been getting from the book. So this is something that needs to be pushed out there more globally so it's sustainable because I'm one of the fortunate ones. I'm an anomaly, uh, one of the fortunate young African-American men that can make it out of such dire conditions. Um, some of them are, some, some of those conditions were local. Many of those issues were systemic and those systemic issues still, still uh, persist today. So. That's my story in a nutshell. What you see here uh, is a superintendent, a professional, highly decorated works in progress, <laughs> continuing, to, continuing to try to do my work to find my space in this big thing called this ever-changing society. Wow, that was fantastic. Again, I'm, I'm every time you speak, I'm, I always have <laughs> thoughts in my head. I very rarely have any questions because you're so thorough. But I do have I do have one question. Why did you write your book? Why why did you write Problem Child? Because I felt that it was an opportunity to shed light, um, shed light on students who who struggle in the education system, um, not necessarily because of the lack of academic acumen but some of the societal issues and perceptual issues that tend to hold young people back. And as I have had the opportunity to, to, to work in the education space now for 26 years, you know, as a teacher, a dean of students, assistant principal, principal, director of secondary education, and now completing my 11th year as a superintendent, I, 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 I am so hopeful because educators really want to do the right things for children. But we are a profession that sometimes you have to have a blueprint for educators to follow. And I said, this is an opportunity to tell my story, which is an autoethnography, and then to map my story onto how I intentionally led in the classroom or intentionally led as an administrator, which I was getting and continued to get positive results. Uh, it's all about building relationships, building the confidence of educators, really uh, cultivating a culture of empowerment and efficiency and effectiveness for our educators, and letting them know that teachers are the most powerful resource for all kids, and especially kids living in poverty, if they had in poverty in the un underserved communities, if they understand how to either tell their story to pull the students into this pathway and journey, or use a very acute ear to learn the stories of the students that they're leading and magnify their stories to be able to push them to infinite possibilities of success. And I felt it was necessary. And um, so the, the, the book Problem Child, yes, it tells the story of a, a young adolescent struggling with the ills of poverty, struggling with some societal issues, uh, struggling with some systemic issues, but finding that hopeful beacon of hope and light in the classroom. And we know the data with classroom teachers. There are not many teachers, when you look at it on a big scale, uh, this big scale that look like me, 
that come from the same background as I do, but they are educators and those educators should be empowered with the license to have to, the license to bring that art to life in the classroom to motivate all children. It can be done. So the book is not only an autoethnography to talk about my issues, but it's also a blueprint of the educators that inspired me to become an educator and how this is good work for the profession. And it infuses our educators with confidence knowing, hey, you can do it, you can do it. You're built for this. You're built for this work. The, 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 uh, um, the, the future is in your hands. Educators are influential. And it may, it, you know, it may sound cliche, but educators have the future in their hands because we're able to lead students to infinite possibilities of success. We're able to infuse students with the skills, the confidence, and of course, the academia for them to step out to be confident, to be able to step out and take their seat at the table, to be able to put their fingerprints on or put their fingerprints on this ever changing society. It, it's so exciting. It's that big for teachers. It's that big for educators. Um, and, you know, it, in the book, I push back against uh, a statement that we hear often as educators say, so, you know, um, what do you do for a living? Oh, well, I'm just a teacher. Oh, I'm just a kindergarten teacher, or I'm just a high school teacher. You're never just a in education. You are the consummate champion of children. You hold the keys to their pathway to that next level to be able to make, to make sustainable change in this ever-changing society. And Lord knows we need leadership. We need we need hopeful visionaries on what this future uh future ever changed society should become we need that but so we have to continually take the responsibility where where are social justice uh mindsets passion and purpose on our sleeves and to push the narrative for this to be a better society in the future our time is running out Dr. Ransaw, you know, once we hit a half a century, what, we got 50 years left? We have young people who have 80 years left and 90 years left because, you know, we're living longer. So we want to be able to invest, invest in these future leaders, these future entrepreneurs, these future legislators. It's our job to infuse them with all of the skills and confidence to go out and change the world. Well, hopefully I have another, at least another 50 years left. <laughs> I, I, I appreciate you sharing that's, that part of the story with me. Um, I'm thinking when you said teachers that look like you, I, I don't, I definitely only had two black teachers. I had a, a black, I think either preschool or elementary school teacher, or first, I'm sorry, preschool or first grade. Then I had a black female typing instructor. Um, it was a typing instructor, but they had switched over to computers. That's how old I am, by the way, for those of you who are watching. And we'd switch over to computers, and I was a big new technology at the time where we, and it was just a keyboard with a screen, right? So it was pretty amazing. But I had no black male teachers until. I was an undergrad. I had one as an undergrad, and I had one at, in my PhD, one in my PhD program, and that was it. <laughs> so I only had three. Um, I guess that would be four, but one was one wasn't a full time teacher. She was just part of one of the class. So technically speaking, I only had three uh, teachers of of who were of color. Um, all the way from pre-K all the way to PhD. So I think I think it's important that we have folks that look like us. I also remember reading something not too long ago for black males for black male students who don't need to. I, I think that's the wrong way to say it. Black male students who have internal motivation, who may not ne necessarily need external motivation tend to thrive in predominantly white institutions. I thought that was really interesting. So 
Well, that's enough about research. That's a that's a little. I don't want to get too boring. Uh, but but one more question for uh, for us. Can. All right. So one more question. What do you think is something that's important for teachers to know about your book? Or what can teachers take away from your book, Problem Child? Yes, and thank you so much, Dr. Brand. So, uh, you know, first and foremost, the book Problem Child, um, the book is a, a three pronged approach to addressing teaching and leadership for students who grow up in underserved communities. Um, with that said, the, the approach not only looks at the impact district leaders can have, but also examines um how to build sustainable relationships with students and how that plays a major role in regards to leading students to infinite possibilities of success it is a motivational book for educators because you want to take a, 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 an authentic example of a child which is me to be able to see wow i was in a lot of tight spots as an adolescent not only in the classroom but also in the neighborhood and coming up against law enforcement. So this is a really deep uh, personal story. But the key is, the bright light is, the people who saved my life, they were educators. Mm -hmm. They saw something in me that I didn't see while I was living carpe diem as a teen and we were in survival mode. And I always say, you know, as a young adolescent, sometimes growing up, in underserved communities, you know, we have that that mindset of, you know, I'm ready to die. And there are educators that focused me in that said, you know, why would you wake up every day ready to ready to die? How about preparing to live and live long and have a legacy? So that is, you know, uh, the book Problem Child with that three pronged approach, it takes education and shifts it from straight stand and deliver pedagogy and the impact of high academic standards to pushing it to, you know, that education is a social, an exercise in social justice in this ever changing democracy. So one of the most powerful pieces that, um, that, that has come out of the book for educators and, 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 and they applaud and they love it and it's, it's just motivating because yes, it's hard work. And I, I like what you were saying, Dr. Ransom, in, in regards to having diversity within the classroom. I challenge any African American student to count 10 African American teachers or on, on their hands in the K to 12 experience, even in urban settings. Can you get 10? The answer, and I've been asking this question nationally, I haven't found one yet haven't found one yet so is but 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 do you use those demographics as an excuse to accept historical gaps in under in students who are traditionally labeled as underachievers no you empower the teachers that we have meanwhile working on efforts of diversity equity and inclusion but you empower the teachers that we have with information and the license to build relationships with the children that they serve we build that type of synergy nationally. We'll see these achievement gaps begin to close. But as simple as it sounds, sometimes it is a struggle be, to, to form relationships with children because when you're in the role of an educator, sometimes you believe you know you have to be in control, you have to be in the front, you have to be all powerful, but you have to be flexible enough and have the confidence to be able to slow it down and build relationships with children by listening to them. Children are very different nowadays. We don't know everything about the children we serve. Our goals are to do whatever we can to understand them and we're in, in the communities that they come from so that we can better lead from the front with our expertise and professionalism. And have fun doing it, do it with a smile. You know, you want to, I'm always recruiting. And what I mean by that, I want young scholars to aspire to become a superintendent because I'm sick and tired of being the first at everything. 
And it took me all the way up to my 25th year to not be the first in education. I want educate, I want, I want young people to look at education as a, an excellent pathway, as a, a powerful profession to be able to change the conditions of the communities that they serve. I, it, so it's really a motivational book for educators with some with some theory, with, of course, research and also with some autobiographical information and examples of a child who was struggling in the education system and the light switch turned on with powerful influential educators. Wow. Sounds like a great book. And I can attest to that. I actually have read the book. Yes. yes. I actually have read the book. A lot of times people comment, I actually have read the book and I like the book because it has a reflective first person type of tone to it. I really appreciate that. But more than anything else, I think it helped people, help, help readers solidify the environment that you were in, right? And that contrasts nicely with the hope and how you got to your level of success. So I like the interconnection. So once again, we have the book Problem Child. Thank you very much. We'll see you next time. Thank you uh, for teaching practices. Thank see you so you. much, Dr. Ransom. Thank you.